it's still ringing. Good morning on this very windy, cold day, hopefully the last really cold Sunday. My name's Kathy Ryder. I am the board liaison for membership services. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We are a religious community who commit ourselves to diversity. We hope to nourish human differences those of gender, race, age, ability, sexual orientation, political views, culture, class, and religious belief. Welcome to all who treasure freedom of conscience in the search for truth. We promise to do our best to provide you with a spiritual home. We extend a special welcome today to our visitors. We hope that you'll follow us on our Facebook page and who participate in Zoom and receive announcements about special events and our religious exploration classes, please sign up for our weekly emails. There should be a link in the comment section on our Facebook page where you can sign up. I'd like to draw your attention to recent announcements. For those in person, they're printed in your order of service. And there are links on the UUC newsletter and the weekly UU Connections for those watching online. Thank you for joining us today in person and online. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Last week we uh, blended our voices together. It was kind of magical. So 
I am uh, the Reverend Julianne Lepp. It's so great to be here with you in person and online. Um, I am not Stephanie Turner, a hospitality chair, I'm sorry to say. She couldn't be with us this morning. Um, But I do have some news um, that you'll find uh, either online or if you're here in person, we have newsletters for April. And um, on April 1st, we will be moving to mask optional and um, we will also be returning to full um, hospitality. So we'll have our social hour downstairs with beverages and things like that. And um, our only exception is we'll continue to have our singers and our choir mask to, as we continue to kind of navigate the safety of the pandemic. Um, So downstairs, we're we're starting to get back together. Like today, we'll have uh, coffee to go. So if you go downstairs, the wonderful Tracy Hirsch will be downstairs with a a pot of coffee if you um, would like to take some coffee to go. But next week, we'll have tables. You can hang out, get to talk to your buddies that you haven't seen in a while, meet new people. And we're looking for volunteers to help with that. That's my lead up. So if you're here in person, Tracy Hirsch, uh, you can see her. And it's uh, a great way to get to know people. So um, if you're interested in volunteering for hospitality, talk to me or talk to Tracy Hirsch. And um, thank you so much. And also I wanted to let you know that the flowers today are given in honor of Alita Reese um, and for the next few weeks. And, thank, um, and thanks for her genealogy research. Good morning, I'm Angela Homan and I'm your worship worship associate today and I'm gonna read our opening words, In Faith by Sunshine Jeremiah Wolf. This is a congregation that gathers in faith, not faith in one religion or one God or any one way. We gather in faith of the power of diversity, the power of love and the hope of the world transformed by our care. We gather in faith in ourselves and those around us, not in faith that requires perfection or rightness in one another. Rather, a faith that in our shared imperfection, we may learn to stumble and fall together. Faith that we will help one another to rise and to try again and again. We are Unitarian Universalists. Hi, I'm Amy, jo- I'm Amy Johnson, the RE coordinator, and this is my son, Sam Johnson. I go by she, her pronouns, and he goes by he, him pronouns. Uh, we're going to ch- light the chalice, so please join us in the words found in your service. Ready? Okay. Mindful that with great power comes great responsibility. We light this chalice in the hopes that in the brightest day, in blackest night, our faith will flame on. <laughs> Do you want to light it? Do you want to light it? Which, what, what Do you remember? Grab a candle. Two years ago, we made the choice to close our doors and go virtual. At first, it was only going to be for a few weeks, and then, as we all know, weeks turned into months, and then the months dragged on. We, the UU staff, had many meetings about what to do, how to keep our congregation from losing faith, How can we sustain our people? What can we do for our families? What do our children need? We brainstormed and reevaluated and carried on as best we could. To me, it felt like I was throwing everything I could at our families and hoping something would stick, proverbially speaking, of course. My son and I made DIY craft videos, read stories, and held services over Facebook, over Zoom, and through email. 
At the time, I felt like I was scrambling, trying my best to meet the varied needs of our families and keep our heads above water. In the process, my house was, a chaotic, was chaotic and messy. Every room had piles of projects in varying states of completion, odds and ends of craft supplies, ring lights, phone mounts on tables for filming, and stacks of children's books everywhere. We filmed and edited videos in between virtual school lessons and homework. Sometimes it felt like I was talking to no one. Other times I had long heart-to-hearts with individual parents about how they were doing when one or two families would trickle into Zoom gatherings. And still other times we had big virtual parties where we would play bingo, dance, show off pets, carve pumpkins, or build gingerbread houses. When we joined up with other congregations across the country for virtual RE, we had the opportunity to meet UU families from all over. Our kids made friends as close as Madison and as far away as Texas. Every Sunday, we got to know our long-distance UU friends more and more. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> we shared joys and concerns, such as uh, we mourned the loss of a pet we never met, and then weeks later, we celebrated when they got a new kitten. And I got to watch other RE coordinators work, learning new ways to light a chalice, new ways to hold children's chapel, new games and activities. And even though we aren't meeting virtually together, I still share those connections, and we continue to exchange ideas and resources. Over these last two years, while we met virtually, I sometimes felt awkward and inept. Other times, I felt recharged and connected. Most of the time, I just hoped I was doing enough for our families. As it turned out, I was. Many of you expressed how much the virtual RE activities meant to your family. Even if you didn't directly participate online, you were just glad the offering was there for you when and if you were ready. You were just glad that I was there. <clears throat> and I was glad to be there. Had I not had something to keep me busy, I might not have had such a positive outlook during the pandemic. And my son, who like myself, is an extrovert, <laughs> having a little window to stay connected to our community was exactly what we needed for our own mental and emotional health. All the virtual services and activities we offered in the virtual spaces between us fed me and my family just as much as it fed yours. I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to serve every single one of our RE families, whatever you needed, whether it was a service over Zoom, a pre-recorded craft video, or an uplifting email. Helping you helped me weather the storm. And beyond RE, I saw the same connection in all of us. I'm so proud of our congregation over these last two years. Together, we dropped off care packages, wrote letters, held virtual happy hours, met in parks, took walks, made pasta together over Zoom, learned macrame, became Facebook friends, widened our circles, and stayed in touch. Even in the darkest moments of these last two years, I had faith that we would be back here again today, like we are now. Thank you for helping me to keep the faith. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Susan O'Brien. Um, it's good to see everybody. I'll be reading The Holy Work of Showing Up by Ashley Horan. How is it with your soul? This is the question that John Wesley, Anglican priest and the founder of Methodism, was known to ask of participants in small reflection groups. I ask you because for me, this has been a hard week, a hard two years. <laughs> so beloveds, how is it with your souls? If your response to that question is anything like mine, I want, you to, in I want to invite you to pause to say a prayer, sing a song, light your chalice, feel the force of gravity pulling us all toward the same center. Whatever helps you feel more rooted and less alone. Now do it again and again and again. And once you feel that rootedness and connection, hear this. 
You are loved beyond belief. You are enough. You are precious, your work and your life matter, and you are not alone. You are a part of a we, a great cloud of witnesses, living and dead, who have insisted that this beautiful, broken world of ours is a blessing, worthy of both deep gratitude and fierce protection. Our ancestors and our descendants are beckoning us, compelling us onward toward greater connection, greater compassion, greater commitment to one another and to the earth. Together, we are resilient and resourceful enough to say yes to that call, to make it our life's work in a thousand different ways, knowing that we can do no other than bind ourselves more tightly together and throw ourselves into the holy work of showing up again and again to be part of building that world of which we dream, but which we have not yet seen. What a strange time to learn how to be an adult. I've unwillingly forfeit that high school promise of being a fully functional cog in society the very next day after graduation. In return, my peers and myself got a brief call out in a clunky PowerPoint, heralding the beginning of the end with only a crackle of a laptop microphone. That promise and many like it changed immediately as we all have. I stared myself down and fell face first into the falsehoods the unkind bits of my mind spits out. It's hard to resist when you have no other voices to shout louder. I continue to be entangled in that chemical sorrow. To try and combat that, I fell into a world of blue-lighted fantasy, one brighter and more persistently energetic than my own. I became something of a music snob. Spotify became a jungle I continued to happily get lost in. I discovered shoegaze, my Kate Bush obsession, and my passion for painstaking playlist curation. Also, after a long while of reading and admiring others from afar, I published my own first fan fiction to a site called Archive of Our Own to a surprisingly warm reception. I took a gamble, throwing my hat into the ring of the ruthless interconnected tubes that make up the web. From that snowballed appreciative comments, invitations to chat, and eventually friendships, one of which happens to be with another creator that I adored since the beginning of my spectative adventures through fanfic. We actually work together to create ferocious pieces of joy. When I take a step back and realizing I'm collaborating with another person that was once an untouchable username, my mind is blown. As of today, my archive of our own account has just shy of 200,000 words to its name, but enough about that. Something I've almost never done is get supplies to further explore my hobby of drawing. That's since been corrected, and I'm now knee deep in the mind boggling realm of digital art. With it, I feel a boundless sense of freedom unrestricted to pencil line indents and sketchbook dimensions. I can literally do whatever, erase whatever, render and blend whatever, it's a big deal to me, okay? <laughs> I admittedly neglected my usual haunts and real life, real people communities in favor of my four familiar bedroom walls and computer screen. Even dipping down to the acoustic to write or people watch seemed out of the question. I think I and many others became fearful elitists, taking on vows of solitude way too strongly than needed. We punish ourselves for our shortcomings in a time that does not nurture upward and outward growth. The world didn't need me, so I didn't need it. A hermetic life leads without fail to tempting introspection. My theology as a whole is a bizarre joyride through fairy tales and sporadic attempts at meditation. Faith in my beliefs and development of them remains a withered root, but still living. Maybe I was so desperate for the outside world, I failed to explore the one within even when given the endless chance. In other news, I started going to school for HVAC at a very own technical college, a choice that surprises myself and anyone around me. I think I'm crazy for making that choice all the time. To be honest, that path I'm on does not excite me much. 
It feels challenging and rocky, as I know I'm in for pain at any turn, no matter how hard I try to overcome not being a man. At this point, I feel I'm of two halves, a face I show the world I'm supposed to exist in, and another that is truly myself, strong and wise to my wishes. Still, I want that promise that was given to me. I want to thrive and take up my own decorated space in this world, rub shoulders with like and unlike-minded folks, make friends with them, romp and scream and have gut-busting fun, since we know what it's like for all of that to come crashing down. It's hard to bend those pleas to reality as it begins to reemerge from its slumber. But the light at the end of the tunnel is approaching brighter and brighter. It gives me hope that I may be able to become a person again and maybe even live up to any and all predictions placed upon me. I press on, gritting my teeth. I put my shoulder to the wheel because I'm still learning. And now it's time for our giving. The religious community, this religious community exists by its mission as a fire exists by burning. But a fire cannot burn without fuel. And it is the time, the energy, the imagination, the vision, the creativity, the compassion, the love, and the financial support of the members and friends of this community that fuels our mission to nurture and sustain a welcoming, inclusive, and diverse liberal religious community that transforms lives and serves the world. Your support, the free and generous support of each and every member and friend of this community is what fuels this community and its mission and without your support, the flame of justice, community and love cannot burn brightly to warm ourselves and be a beacon to the world. Threatened by division and fear. For the giving, you can indicate whether you are donating today for the 50-50 Share the Plate, a pledge donation, or other fund. Our 50-50 Share the Plate recipient for March is the LSS Chippewa Area Recovery Resource CAR. Scan to donate or text to give, 84321. On-site donations can be made in the donation drop box in the gathering room. Checks can be mailed to UUC 421 South Farwell Street, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54701. With gratitude for the abundance in our lives, we give to help people in need and to support the work of this congregation. And now it's time for our music for giving.
And now it's time for our congre congregational response. Can we all in unison repeat the words? From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. Good morning, I'm Bobby Cookta. I have an admission, I'm guilty of living sometimes on automatic pilot. My life can get filled with all kinds of activity and then suddenly the, work, the week has gone by. When Reverend Julie asked if I would be willing to share some of my thoughts about faith, what I've done to weather the pandemic and what I've learned about myself, I said yes because I thought it would challenge me to make, to make the time to clarify some of my thoughts. I consider myself fortunate in many ways. Two of the good fortunes that helped me navigate these past year, year, two years are that I'm retired and that a longtime partner who is, I have a longtime partner who's clever and good at keeping things interesting. My concerns about COVID and the skills that I needed to help me navigate the pandemic are very different from those of you who have had to work and parent during this difficult time. I know it has been very tough, a very tough time for many of you learning how to pivot and adapt and deal with constant change. You all deserve some kind of medal. So then how do I answer the question, what does faith mean to a Unitarian Universalist? Faith is one of those religious words that I have struggled with. I'm more comfortable talking about faith if I can define it as being optimistic and believing that in time and by learning to look at things from a new perspective, eventually things work out. Or we learn how to accept the things we cannot change. So I can say that faith and hope have helped me navigate the pandemic. A long time ago, my mom taught me that if there's a task at hand, make a to-do list. So that's how I started this talk. My list of my feelings, my thoughts, the activities, perhaps some insights. How did I feel early in the pandemic and how do I feel now? What actually have I been doing these past few years other than a whole lot of knitting? <laughs> in the beginning, there was so much we didn't know and I was often anxious about all this uncertainty. How is this virus gonna affect me, my community? Should I wash my groceries? How do you use Zoom? <clears throat> You're muted. <laughs> is it COVID or is it just a cold? How long will it be before there's a vaccine? So to help me feel less anxious, I felt like I had to do something. How many of you remember these masks. <laughs> um, there was, there was a, this was probably one of the first ones I saw for myself. Um, there was a group called Masked Bees, and they sewed thousands, I think, masks for essential workers, because at first there was a shortage of, shortage of masks. Um, I know a lot of you have sewn and donated masks, and we couldn't be together but we could be part of something that might help. So I asked some friends about what did they do to help get through Zoom? What did we do before Zoom? We Zoomed, we've Zoomed hobby groups, game nights, birthday parties with friends and family, meetings, 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 choir, Saturday sing-alongs, harvest auction events, book clubs, yoga, strong bodies, just to name a few. We were creating ways to connect with each other even though we were physically apart. Many friends said that going for long walks was important during the past two years. Hooray for our city park, city and state leaders who have seen the value in our parks and trails. As I reflected about the past two years, I kept coming back to being thankful for and impressed with everything people have been doing to improve the quality of our lives. 
I appreciate all the people who have organized activities, the Harvest Auction, Volume 1's COVID Clues Trivia Hunts, the Turkey Trot Home Edition, and Virtual Book Festivals, to name a few. I'm also extremely grateful for the research scientists and healthcare professionals who have made it possible to return to being together. Looking back at the activities from the past two years, perhaps I have learned to live a bit more intentionally than before COVID. Aware that I can make choices and paying attention to how I spend my time. Pandemic safer at home protocols prevented us from doing things that we may have taken for granted, like gathering with family and friends and attending concerts. At first I thought once folks were vaccinated, there was going to be this headline, it's over. And we'd just go back to pre 2020. <laughs> Silly me. The vaccine and all we've learned about preventing illness are allowing us to tiptoe rather than jump right back into pre-pandemic life. I'm reminded of an Albert Schweitzer quote. At times our light goes out and it's rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. This past year, I started writing in a gratitude journal. I don't write every day, but the act of noticing and being grateful in the moment was something I work hard at and has helped my well-being. I feel a bit embarrassed that, to say that some of my biggest COVID lessons were learning the value of living with intention and practicing gratitude. It seems so obvious. But because the limitation of the limitations placed upon us during the pandemic, I was forced to break out of my usual automatic pilot mode and make plans for what I could do. I hope the lessons I learned stay with me. Now this is something that I'm going to invite you um, to watch Angela, um, and if you wish, you're welcome to join in. Um, I know during uh, the pandemic we all looked for ways to root down, to spread our wings, to connect with nature. And so I'm going to read this reading, Our Roots of Resilience. And if you feel like wiggling your toes or swaying in the wind, you're welcome to join with Angela. Feel the gravity of the earth holding you in place. Wiggle your toes as if they were roots. Roots connect you to the earth, lending you strength. Gently sway in the wind turning your body like the trunk of a tree, leaning this way and that way, bending as the air pushes and pulls. What surrounds you might sway you, make you bend and feel unbalanced. Wiggle your toes. Know that your roots can hold you as you grow and learn. A tree is nourished by soil and water. You are nourished by food, by the earth, and the water it provides. You are cared for and loved by many, many people. Breathe deeply. Ready? One more time. Breathe deeply. Still yourself. Know that your roots are so very strong. Wiggle your roots. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. So many lessons from the pandemic we heard from Charlotte and Amy and Bobby. And we think about all the things that helped us get through. What was it that helped us have resilience? What was it that gave us roots and kept us strong? When I was uh, young, I had a pine forest behind my house, and whenever there was a storm, 
the pine trees would fall down very easily because they had shallow roots and they would grow fast. Up here you see more hardwoods and there is a, a saying that I learned um, about the bamboo forest, what obviously isn't up here in Wisconsin, but just go there with me. The bamboo forest has roots that interconnect and in Korean it's called jimsum, jinsum, and it means community together. And so they're one organism. And, and if you've read The Secret Life of Trees or heard a podcast about it, it's amazing how interconnected life is, that life can communicate through the soil. And as Charlotte pointed out, you know, there's communities on the internet where we communicate in ways that we might never have imagined. I know recently I have joined Twitter. I thought I would never be a Twitterer. <laughs> And there are people on Twitter who talk about writing and publishing and agents, and, and that's been my fascination. One of the things that got me through COVID was getting a hobby <laughs> because I needed something that had nothing to do with worry or despair or the news on Ukraine or how many COVID numbers it was. I needed to write and I needed to know that I could read a book and disappear. And so there's so many ways in which we held each other and held ourselves. And so do we carry that forward into our life now? Do our roots go deep enough and do they go far enough? And what relationships did you make or rekindle? I know I connected with people I used to live with in Atlanta. I have a new online uh, writers group that we meet every two weeks. And these are people I haven't talked to in 12 years. So it's, it's fascinating to think what we can carry forward and maybe how we'll live a little less automatically, like Bobby said. I think we can kind of go through the motions of our lives, especially when we're busy. But now we are re-entering the world. Next week here at this congregation, mask will be optional. And um, I know myself, I'm immunocompromised, so I'll probably wear my mask, maybe more than some of you. But here in the pulpit, I'll be taking it off. And it will be a joy to be in a new time, right? Where COVID transmissions in Eau Claire County are low. And, and that's exciting. I know when I've gone places and taken off my mask, I, ha I have to sit in my body and I think, am I okay? <laughs> is this okay to be doing this? And then, then I'll say, oh, I wonder what my facial expression is now. <laughs> Do I know how to make small talk? Um, is this awkward? <laughs> and, and it's true, it's, it's, uh, for me anyway, it's learning how to be with people again and how to socialize. I, I heard a bunch of you recently went to see Stomp at uh, the Pablo Center and that you laughed out loud harder than you've laughed in a long time. That says a lot, right? That we need humor, we need interaction and we need each other. And I'm so grateful that our congregation now has the technology to allow people to attend online. We've sometimes had equal attendance online as well as in person. And to have that flexibility and uh, reach means that a member who moved to Italy can stay a member. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so it's, it's joyful. What does that mean for our community going forward? We're gonna have our annual meeting and uh, on May 15th, that means that people will be able to vote here in person and people will be able to vote online. That's a first, we're moving into the 21st century. <laughs> so I wish for you roots that are strong, the ability to wiggle your toes, to play, to laugh, and especially in these hard times, to know that you are surrounded by love that does not care about your gender, your belief system, it cares about who you are. And of course, we do care about that, but the point is that we can be who we are and be in this community with all of our differences and our voices, and it makes us, it makes us stronger. So breathe in with me. And breathe out. And know that I love you. And that you are loved by many here. Thank you.
And sadly, it's time for our closing words today. It's been such a wonderful service. Our closing words today are very close to my heart, and they're called Fitted for This Day by Kimberly Quinn Johnson. The words of June Jordan in Poem for South American Woman, which she presented at the UN on August 9th, 1978. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are not perfect, but we are perfectly fitted for this day. We are not without fault, but we can be honest to face our past as we chart a new future. We are the ones we have been waiting for. May we be bold and courageous to chart the new future. May we have faith in a future that is not known. We are the ones we have been waiting for. And now please join us for extinguishing the chalice. You wanna sing it, you wanna say it with me? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. again. Good job. Do you want to use that? Good job.